Kaya, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, on the rehearsal of the Shabbat day and Lash Awan Fanash. Abanawa, Shabbat Shabbat Fanash. Kaya, Shemka, Yahawa, Malakwaka, Tawahawa, Tazaka, Haya, Asha, Fawataza, Kawa, Haya, Basha, Mayam, Nathanana, Rakanko, Yahwam, Wasalak, Nawa, Kawawakino, Kasalak, Nawa, Kawawakino, Wala, Tabanayana, Wana Saya Wan, Abo, Awashayana, Mayan, Wai, Kaya, Laka, Hamalakwa, Wa Allah, Wa Fapawa, Wa Awa Amu, Awa Waya Amu, Awa. So, what's the word? Dawa. So we have the North America and South America and Central America. 
he, he coined those terms. He was an Italian map maker, and he actually made the maps that when he came over and discovered, actually discovered the, the uh, America from the heathen's perspective. Then you have Christopher Columbus, 1492 to 1504, he actually did four voyages, four voyages from Spain, he's an Italian as well, from Spain to the continent and the, the, the topic of the day to the Indies, the West Indies, what we look at as the West Indies today, which incorporates Ephraim, Puerto Rican, the Manasseh, the Cuban, Simeon, the Dominican, Zebulon, the Guatemalans and Panamanians and Mahaya, uh, God, well, not God, uh, uh, Asher, Colombia, the Uruguay, and the Natali, Argentina, and Chile. See, these are our brothers that fit the description of what the prophecies all say in Deuteronomy 28. And we often forget these brothers. We kind of focus in on uh, Esau and what he's done to Judah. But I want to bring out these points where uh, the brothers, as we can see representatives from Zabila or Zebulon on the screen in, in Nathaniel, and the other brother, Howard. Huh. These brothers are from the middle, the, the Central Americas, huh. and and the Spaniards, I wanted to point out that the Spaniards is responsible for the destruction of the Indies, right? So, let's get to it. But first, we got we to gotta realize how our brothers got over there to, to the West Indies. I'm going to go to 2nd Esdras in the Apocrypha, 2nd Esdras 13 and verse 40. I'll give you time to read, get there. 2nd Ezra 13 and verse 40. And it reads, Those are ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Oseed the king, whom Solomonassah, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. So Solomonassah, the king of, of uh, Assyria, this is during the Assyrian captivity. Our northern kingdom brothers were brought in captivity to the Assyrians, right? And when they went to the Assyrians, they made a decision that they were going to carry on further. Let's read on. It says, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwell. Mm. So they, they moved from one location and made a council of it that they was going to leave this area under the heathen's control and go to a further land where no one ever dwelt before. This is key in history and getting an understanding of how our northern kingdom brothers got to the western hemisphere. Right? Read it on. It says that they might there keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. See, they never kept those statutes and laws and commandments in their own land. They were going off. And there's another whole history behind that, how the kingdom became the northern kingdom and how they got separated from the southern kingdom, which is Judah. That's a whole other history. I won't go into that right now. But I'm focusing right on the northern kingdom and what the destruction of the Spaniards did in the middle, uh, in the uh, Central Americas. Okay, come. It says, verse 23, And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held the spread still till they were passed over. Right? For those that through the country, there was a, a great way to go namely of a year and a half. So when they entered into the Euphrates, if you can picture it, they circled all the way around Africa, hit the jet stream, and went straight over to what we know now as South America and into the, the uh, Central America, right? So our Northern Kingdom brothers started to settle, and they settled in that land right there. 
right? It says, for through that country there was a great way to go, slap you. Uh, verse 46, then were they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the streams of the streams that may that that they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. Right? Now, the question is, they went there to go keep the statutes and the laws which they never kept in the original land. Oh. But did they keep the statutes and the laws? We're going to see that they didn't keep it. Right? They started going off into idolatry and, and uh, other worships. They started to create their own gods based on the moons and stars and the heavens and the earth and the animals that they saw and that they came across in that land. Right? What did the Most High say about that? What did he say? We can go to 2 Kings. I feel like it. We go to um, 2 Ezra 13 and 42. I want to reiterate that. That they might keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 36. Deuteronomy 28 and 36. And this is the point where we meet the Bible the scriptures, the prophecy, and the Bible tells us if they bring not the, the law and the testimony, there's no light in them, right? So I'm connecting the dot of real history to the Bible. This real history is going to connect with the Bible so that you know that our Northern Kingdom brothers are the victims of the Deuteronomy 28 curses, right? So Deuteronomy 28 and verse 36, watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 36, 36. Yeah, uh, before I go there, I want to read Deuteronomy 28 and 15. It says, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, the how of thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now we know, we know through the transatlantic slave trade that the Judah receives some of these curses. Well, a lot of people like to read the Bible and overlook the northern kingdom curses that they receive. Through, the, through Deuteronomy 28. And this is where this book, where Bartolome de Las Casas, and I would advise all the brothers to get a copy of this book right here, right? Get a copy of this book because it's going to help you with your study and your understanding of what actually happened to the Northern King. So I'm going to break off from there and I'm going to read a few excerpts from the book. So that you can get an understanding of what's going on in, in, in this book, right? Let's start off. It says, this is page nine of the book. It says the Americans was discovered in 1492. And the first Christian settlements established by the Spanish. Mm. So here we come and see where Christianity is being introduced into the northern kingdom at this time in 1492 and 14 and thereafter all of the spaniards started to invade the central america where our brothers the northern kingdoms were located go to psalms 58 and 3 watch this the book of psalms chapter 58 and verse 3 And it reads, it says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. You see this? The Spaniards began to speak lies to our Northern Kingdom brothers. And in doing so, they started to take over on a mental mind trap. The mental mind trap and the spiritual mind trap. They introduced Christianity in the form of wickedness. They did it in the form of wickedness 
to take control of our brethren. Now, this is what was going on during this time. It was the beginning of the colonization period. When 1492 happened, this is the beginning of the colonization for the Northern King. Number two, this is the beginning of the trade between the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere. So this is a very important to understand that. And number three, this was a destruction of the beginning of the Hispanolia. Hispanolia. That's the beginning of the destruction. And we're going to read some of these excerpts from the book to get an understanding. The on, they first settled the large and fertile island of Hispanolia, which boasts 600 leagues of coastline and is surrounded by a great many large islands. Now these islands are, are what you're going to see on the screen right here. See these islands? Mm. You got Cuba, you got Hispanonia, what we call Puerto Rico, and the Dominican, and many other islands, the Guatemalan, and all so forth, so forth and so on. These islands is where Christopher Columbus came to, and he started in Hispanonia, which is now called Haiti slash Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. That's where some of our Northern Kingdom brothers are the Simians and um, uh, the Western, the Southern Kingdom dealing with uh, uh, Levi, which was transported there during the transatlantic slave trade. All right, carrying on. Another excerpt. The pattern established at the outset has remained unchanged to this day, and the Spaniards still do nothing except for tear the natives to shreds. This is what they did to our brethren. They tore them to shreds. They murdered them and inflicted upon them untold misery, suffering, and distress, tormenting, harrying, and persecuting them mercilessly. You see this? This is the Spaniards that I'm talking about. We all, we all know what Esau did to do, right? But look at what's happening to the, the uh, Spaniards. I mean, the, what the Spaniards did to our northern king of brothers. They tormented them. They murdered them. They did everything. And some of the atrocities that we're going to discover in the next 10 minutes, we're going to see exactly what they did. And then we're going to go to the scriptures in Deuteronomy 28 to show you this is what was ordained by the Most High if we didn't keep his commandments. So to get out of these curses, what do you think we have to do? We have to keep the commandment. We have to get back to the laws and statutes of the Most High. Yahweh by the Shem Yahweh Right? So keep that in mind as we go through these curses. Right? Moving on. The first picture I'm going to show you is some of the atrocities, what they did. Look at this. That was a picture of 13 individuals hanging by the neck with their hands tied behind. That's right, brother. He got the book. 13 individuals hanging by their neck with their hands tied behind their back, butt naked, and there's a fire up under their feet. This is some of the things that they did to our, to our people. And that 13 number is significant. It represented Yahushua and the 12 apostles. That was the thinking of these devils. They used the, the, the Messiah, the Yahushua, and the 12 apostles, and they collected 13 bodies and hang them up and put the fire up under their feet and torture them slowly, burning them, clip to a crisp while they are alive. Think about that. That's an atrocity. You think the most high and I know we pay these individuals for what they did to our brethren, to our ancestors? They got to pay the price. And we're going to see that, right? So let's look at uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 36. This is one of the curses. And this happened in this time while in Hispaniola. Right this. 
It says, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou or thy fathers have known, and there thou shalt serve other gods in stone. Thou and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether Yahweh shall lead thee. So Yahweh led the Israel, our northern kingdom brothers, to this portion of the world, to the western hemisphere. But he also brought terror along with it. Why? Because we didn't keep the commandments. We didn't we weren't following the law, statutes, and commandments. Verse 49 says this. Deuteronomy 28 and 49. And Yahweh shall bring a nation against thee from far, from when from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyer. Well, guess what? The Spaniards used the eagle as their bird. That was the representation of Spain. It was a reputation of the United States. We have the bald eagle as our national bird. It was the Roman national bird. All of these, all of our captivity, the Greek captivity, everybody used the eagle. That's the key. That's a key and a point of reference that the eagle also came to Central America, right? And they came quickly too. On the boats, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, they all came on those boats to, to, to bring destruction to Hispaniola, right? Let's read on. Verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of old or show favor to the young. Now, look at this picture. Does that look like they're showing favor to the old or young? they just stringing everybody up, right? They string them up, and they got a fire lit up on them. Our ancestors, and they're burning them alive. They didn't care if you were old or young. And the, the destruction that they brought was untold and bought by, by, uh, by the Lord de la Casa. He was a Spaniard priest. He thought it necessary to write this history down to reveal it to the king. How savage that his people were against the indigenous people, which are the children of Israel, right? So he documents this. So let's, let's move on to verse 51. It says, And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee neither corn, wine, or oil, increase of thine kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed, destroyed thee. Now we can see a correlation that this happened to the Native Americans, Gad, Ruben, all in America, and also it happens to our people in the Central America, the Northern Kingdom. It's happening to the God, the Most High, the Most High Yahweh. There's a power that we got to reckon with, that we got to respect, that we got to reverence and bow down and give homage and come back to his laws that his commandments. He wasn't playing. He said, if you violate my commandments, I'm going to curse you, and these curses are going to be on you for a sign forever. Mm -hmm. Verse 64, look at this. Deuteronomy 28, 64. And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve by the gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Mm -hmm. Now, when the, when the Spaniards first got here, like I said earlier, they introduced Christianity. It was speaking lies, and it was bringing about lies to the people. It was bringing a false understanding of the scriptures. So guess what, brethren? It's our job to give everybody the right description. Let's see what the brother said in the comment. Yeah. So we got to we gotta be the light for the world. We got to be the watcher. We got to come out and bring forth this truth, this knowledge, and understanding so that our people can understand what history is and how it relates and correlates with the scriptures. All right? Go to Numbers 35 and 33. This is what Yahweh said, right? Numbers 
number 35 and 33. That's why these nations can't be saved. They think they can be saved. They preach and teach that all nations can be saved. But, but through the atrocities of what they did to our brethren in, the, in the, uh, Central America and the atrocities that Esau did to Judah in America, there's no way they could be saved. Look, look, listen at this. This is Deuteronomy 35, 33. It says, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood is defiled the land. For so all the blood that these Spaniards, that Esau spilled over the land, they have defiled the land where we live it right now. Because the Most High sent us to these lands. Why? Through disobedience. But his laws still remain the same for all. Watch this. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So now, they got to get repaid. In the end, coming, how shall I come? He's coming in with his robe dipped in, in blood. His sword is going to be swinging. And he's going to allow us, the Israelites, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, to come together again. And we want exact punishment thereof in which that was done unto us. Right? Give me Genesis 9 and 6. Just to prove that point. Genesis 9 and 6. And I'm going to read it right quick. Genesis 9 and 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Yahweh, made he man you see that we were made in that image and we were his chosen people per deuteronomy 32 8 and 9 we was in his heritage so if all these other nations are out here trying to destroy us the israelites don't you think the most high yahweh and yahweh side gonna bring exact punishment upon them it says that in the book of revelation he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword shall be killed with the sword. Amen. This is the patience of the saints, right? And I paraphrase that. But this is our patience, right? And we see this is what was going on. Now, some more excerpts out of the book. And his his family. There were five main kingdoms. Now what's at the head of a kingdom? There's kings that are head of the kingdom. In Hespelona, there was five major kingdoms. E each very extensive and each with its own king. Isn't that what we just read in Deuteronomy 28? That he was going to send the kings to be in captivity over these other nations? Well, we see this directly with the northern kingdom. In Hispaniola, the land of Haiti and the Dominican, right, along with the other islands that surrounded it, Guatemala, Puerto Rico, Panama, you know, all of the islands, they had their king. And guess what? They came under subjection to these wicked rulers. These men that were speaking lies, bringing false Christianity to the people, and causing them to serve their God, which was Cesarea Bourget, right? Christianity. No, we're supposed to keep these laws and statutes according to the laws, statutes, and commandments, and to follow what your house side say and keep the faith in your house side. Right? He said, keep the commandments. If you love him, keep the commandments. So we gotta be, we gotta turn back, brother. We gotta turn back. Right? Uh give me Isaiah 26 and 21. I'm almost finished. Isaiah 26 and 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26 and 21. And it reads, For behold, the hallowed cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. See, the iniquity of these Spaniards and the iniquity of Esau has doubled. Guess what? That punishment has got to come back to them. Uh -huh. So this is our hope, brethren. We stay 
the minute and they do it to the end, guess what? The outside coming to save us, and we're going to bring destruction to this people. It says, the earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more uncover, and shall no more cover her slain. Isn't that what happened in, in, in the beginning? When Cain with the spirit of Esau slain, slain, slew his brother, and his brother's blood spilled into the earth? What do you have to say? He said, what is that brother? Cain said, am I my brother's people? He tried to get away. But you can't get away. Why? Because the earth is going to yield up that blood to your house. And he said, guess what? The blood of your brother cries up to me. But think about all the saints that was in Hispanola. Think about all the saints that was in Cuba, in Jamaica, in Puerto Rico, in Guatemala, in Dominica. You see what I'm saying? All of these individuals, the blood is crying up to your house. All we have to do is come back to these laws, statutes, commandments, and be obedient and endure to the end. Brother Nathaniel, he brought Brother Howard in. Look at him, right? Wearing the ancient garment. That's mighty. That's mighty and powerful. The elder brought uh, Paul Harrah in, the young lion. Gave him his name. He's wearing his ancient garment. That's mighty. And he also brought me in. You see what I'm saying? Y'all can y'all wearing the ancient garment. Being obedient to the Most High, to the best of our ability, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, keeping the feast days, the holy days, just as the Lord said, just as Yahweh said in the law. And we have to remain and do that, and we have to teach our people thus. Now, if the elder will allow me in the future, I can build upon this point, dealing with his very own. Now, I want to show you one last picture, and there was a lot more I could have went over, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save this. I want to show you this one last picture of our Northern Kingdom brothers suffering at the hands of the Spaniards. Can everybody see that? All right. What that is, is the brethren are tied to stakes in a circle, right? And they are lit on fire. They were unmerciful to our ancestors. Y'all ancestors suffered these atrocities at the hand of the evil that came quickly, all because we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, right? So we were part responsible for this. But guess what? They furthered the affliction. They furthered the affliction, and therefore they must suffer. What is that scripture they suffered? They, they furthered the affliction. Anybody got that scripture? That scripture where they credited the affliction. I'm, I'm going to get it. Nobody got it. Watch this. See, these, 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 these other nations, they cannot get away. They cannot and they will not get away because they furthered the affliction. Zechariah 1 and 15. Watch this, Zechariah 1 and 15, watch this. And I'm going to end it at this note right here with Zechariah 1 and 15. I'm going to leave the brethren with hope and understanding that uh, the Most High, as long as we keep the law, statutes, and commandments, he's going to redeem us. Watch this, Zechariah 1 and 15. It says, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen, right? That are uh, at ease. See, they were at ease doing this to our people. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a second thought, an unconscious. They went in and murdered thousands, millions of people. Then they went across the ocean, picked up a bunch of Judites, our brothers, and brought them here across that water and did the same thing to them. So the heathen got to pay the price, right? And I am very so sort of displeased with the heathen that I eat, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction of the Israelites. Amen. Watch this. Therefore, thus said Yahweh, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, 
stretch the house of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Amen. See, that's, and that's our hope and our prayer. And I'm going to end it with that. I hope the brothers were edified. Uh, I hope I didn't go over my time, and I appreciate and thank your hour by Shemmy Havasha and the elder for allowing me this opportunity to share this word with the brothers. Amen, brother. Amen. So Amen. that that goes to show you right there, man. These brothers is coming up in the knowledge. This knowledge is for our people. Now, we're going to top it off with one more lesson called the horn of salvation. How are we going to get out of here? Yahweh got the plans already set up, brothers. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. There's a new government coming. There's a way out of here. And the way out of here is through Yahweh Shai. Returning, repenting, and acknowledging what we did as men. That's what's wrong with a lot of our brothers. They're not acknowledging what the Most High is saying in this book. They're going to get left behind. So let's read our hope that we have in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Let's read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, though. Come, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. See that? It said us. It didn't say the world. Who's the us? We're going to read on the other precept and show you. The us is talking about the 12 tribes and nation of Israel. Like we've been telling y'all since y'all met us. Yahweh Shah was raised up as a savior for the Israelites. The Israelites broke the commandments, covenant, and laws. They were punished. And the brother showed you some of the verses that match only us and no other people. And like it says in Lamentations, the Lord said, no other nation has gone through what we've been through. They talk about the six million Jews that died. That was Hitler telling his own people who converted to Judaism wrongfully. And they wanted to dictate and take over the world like the Romans did. So they killed them all. And they're still running around here today talking about, oh, look at the Jews. Look at us. Look at us. We the real people of the most high. We the ones suffering. When I found this out, man, I hated it. You saw you. I said, wow. But the brothers calmed us down. They said, listen, brother, you got to wait for the most high. I said, come. So he said, unto us, a child is born. What child was this? Me? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. See, this government going to be upon his shoulder. See, we ain't got a shoulder this. We got to carry our cross. That's right. Until he come. So our burden is the scriptures and the belief in this. So until he come, the Lord said, give yourself in the prayer, ministry of the word, keep my commandments, and spread this abroad to your brothers. That's of the tribes of Israel. He said in Matthew 10, 5 and 6, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and say, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this government that Isaiah is talking about is a new kingdom in New Jerusalem. See, we ain't just going to drop dead like the es Esau taught you in science, and that's it. No, brothers, we're going back to the most high if you don't make it on this side. And... And the end of this captivity is a new kingdom and the destruction of all nations, but he's going to get us out of here with this son that's born. Read on. Come. And his name shall be called Wonderful. He's wonderful. Read. Counselor. Counselor. The mighty power. He's a power, the son of the most high. Read. The everlasting father. The prince of peace. Because Yahweh was in him. When you read in the New Testament, the brothers wrote about that. They say, the Lord was in Christ reconciling the world, the world of Israel. Because that section of the earth, it comes from the Greek word cosmos, it means a particular society. That was the Israelites who received the commandments and laws, all 12 tribes, uh, tribes of us. At that time, only Judah, ben and Benjamin, and Levi were inside Jerusalem. So the scholars of Esau don't know about the Ten Tribes. I confront them all the time. I said, where's the tribe of Zebulon, man? You say you're a Jew, right? Yeah, I'm a Jew. I said, where's, where's Ephraim? 
Oh, uh, well, see, uh, I see, y'all, y'all don't know where the tribes are because you ain't the people. Right. I tell them that all the time. Oh, no, you, why are you wearing that uh, a menorah? I said, because I am an actual Hebrew Israelite. That's why we wear it. Why we wear these turbans and, and garments? Because that's the heritage the Most High gave us, and we put it back on, brothers. We know. Come on. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So he bringing this government that's going to not end, and it's going to be peace to our people. Read on. Upon the throne of David. Upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom to order it. So Yahweh is going to be the order. He's going to bring the order. You see all these camps out of order? Why are they out of order? Because they're going by the precepts of men. When Yahweh comes back here like Moses when he came back, he lined up all the 12 tribes of Israel and had their banners and everybody marched out of there in order. Yahweh is going to put us in order. Right now, we're just rehearsing everything. When he come with that power and great glory, ain't nobody going to see nothing except come out of one Lord. And you're going to bow your head, and we're going to go follow these orders in order with him. Because when he come back here, brother, ain't going to be no playing around. We you doing, brother? Come. Um, and to establish it with judgment and with justice. <laughs> go, go ahead. From his force. Even forever. Let's go to Luke 1 and 30. Proving this. Born. This Savior, Shah, that was prophesied in the Old Testament. They spoke about it when he came in the New Testament. So you Old Testament brothers, you got a veil over your eyes if you don't know this. Now we're going to show you. Let's go to Luke 1, 30 to 33. Come on, this is the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with the hour. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. She did what? And thou shalt conceive in thy womb. So if you conceive a woman's get up pregnant, but where, where it come from? Come from the man's seed. No, no, no. Today it come from a surgeon cutting off a woman's breast. And cut the man's wide off. No, hell no. It came from the natural beginning of man and female. You put your penis in the woman and the sperm make the baby, don't it? That's right. So where they come with this immaculate conception from? Huh? Man, we just read it. He came from the sea, right? Go ahead. Come. For thou hast found favor with the Howard. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. You shall conceive in your womb. Go ahead. And bring forth a son. He gonna bring forth the son that was prophesied in Isaiah 9 and 6. The child that was born for us as a shah is who? My shashams. Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ. Read on. And shall call his name Yahweh Shah. He shall be great. He shall be great. Isaiah what? 19 says, The shot of Kalah. The Savior and the Great One. Don't nobody match that except Yahweh Shah. Not Yahweh Ben Yahweh, that lying, murdering Negro that told people he was he was the anointed one. And he went around all in the cities murdering people. And I met Negroes that said he was coming back. I said, woman, you need your, cut, your tongue cut out. How dare you blaspheme me the Lord's word? She said, he was a cry. I said, get out of here. That's what you got to do with wickedness, man. You got to rebuke it. And some of our people are souped up, man. They've been lied to. It's bad enough we got to deal with this cat right here. Ain't it bad enough we got to deal with this image? Huh? Charles Manson, we got to deal with this. And then you got Negroes amongst us talking about they are the shark. So that's why he said, read on. Come. Uh, and the and the power shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So Yahweh shall go sit on the throne of his father David. David sat on the throne during the time of David and Solomon. That's when we was at our heights, man. When you read in the Old Testament, we were kings and princes and nobles back then. 
We had freedom. We had our own land. We had our temple. That was our glory. Yahweh gave us coming up out of Egypt. And all 12 tribes of us were under Solomon. What happened? Why did we lose everything? We know why now. We don't know. God, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob. So Yahweh shall come and reign over us forever and have of his kingdom there shall be no so, end. So uh, to the end of his kingdom shall be no end. This is what we're hoping in. Go to Acts 13, 23 to back this up. These so-called Christians don't know the Bible because they've been taught by the brother like the brother said these so-called lying pastors and ministers came over here under the so-called white man and gave us their lives. Let's go to uh, 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 Acts 13, 23. Read that. Uh, this is the book of Acts chapter 15. 13, 23. Oh, slide This is the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 23. Of this man's seed. Of this man's seed. When you read above that, they were talking about David, his lineage, coming down to the shop. So there is no immaculate conception. The spirit that was in that cell, in that sperm cell, was from the Most High. The Most High took my shasha out of his bosom. He said, here, go down to the earth and save my people. That's all he did. See? And that's why my shasha, when he came down here on the earth, he was talking spiritually to the people. They were looking at him and said, how are you going to say you are him and you're only 30 years old? Because they couldn't understand him, man, who he was according to this prophecy. Read on. Of this man of seed hath Yahweh, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior. Y'all hear that, brothers? Yahweh was raised unto the 12 tribes of Israel a savior. Read. God, when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So, the baptism of repentance was preached to all the children of Israel. Why? Because they broke the law. The baptism had to come first so the people could clean themselves up. They present themselves to the Shah at the time. This was prophesied in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So then we have to follow what the book says. Read on. Come. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Who think ye that I am? I am not he. He said, I'm not the Shah. Go ahead. But behold, there cometh one after me. Whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. So he said, Look, man, the one who's coming after me, the one I preach, go to Luke 168. He said, This is the one right here. I'm going to show you. Luke spoke about it. Go to Luke 168. Come he on, said, man. This is the one, this is the Shah right here, prophesied in the Bible, in the Old Testament by the prophets. Here he is right here. Read that, brother. Come on. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord, the hour of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. So that kills Christianity. God so loved the world. This man took that one verse and deceived the whole damn planet, man. He went to the Polynesians. He went to the Chinese. He went to all nations and said, God loved the world. And he had a sword in one hand and a rifle in the other one, and he was raping the women and sodomizing the boys. And he put this up in your face and told you that he was Jesus and the people of the Most High. Is he? No, he's the devil. See? And that's why he deceived the whole world. He took that one verse and ran with it when we just read the Hawashah died for the Israelites. The Most High raised him for what? Read. And have raised up in horn of salvation. This is a horn of salvation promised to our people. Read. In the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of this holy prophet. All the prophets since the world began. Go to Jeremiah 23, 5. Let's go to Jeremiah. What did he say? What did he say about the show? 
Because these brothers say, I don't believe in Mahalashai. I walk away from him. I said, listen, man, if you don't believe in the Lord, you condemned. Okay? Because you don't believe in the only begotten son of your house. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. I said, well, where are you going when the ships come? How are you going to get out of America? How are you going to be reconciled with the Father? <clears throat> it ain't happening no more. Let's read Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. This is how we're bringing to us. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, and verse 5. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. There go right there. The righteous branch. Out of his lineage came forth who? The shark. We don't. And the king shall reign, reign and prosper. The king is going to be my shout shout. Like it says in Revelation, we read last time. It said, The king of kings and the lord of lords. When Yahweh shot come back with all them angels, they gonna put that crown on his head. He gonna take the, the British king's crown royal. He gonna take that Hamites kingship, the Filipinos. He gonna take everybody's crown. He gonna put it on his head. Say, now what y'all gonna do? Okay, I'm back. And these are my people, the twelve tribes. And they gonna put their foot up your ass. That's what we gonna do. Read on. It's to execute judgment. And justice in the earth. So we haven't received no judgment, no justice from any of our captives, have we? No, we haven't. We don't. In his days, Judah shall be saved. So in his days, the twelve tribes of Israel on the side that consisted of Benjamin mm -hmm. and Levi, like the brother showed you, because the kingdom had split up to the northern and southern kingdom. They gonna be saved, right? And Israel shall dwell safely. What about the ten tribes? They don't ever mention our brother, Zebulon, uh, Antonio, Athanabah, uh, Brother Howard, all these brothers from the other tribes. Dan, all of them. They come in too. That's right. It's going to be a hundred, like we read in that class. The 144,000 are going to be 12,000 leaders from each tribe. So the Christians got it wrong. They're telling our people lies, and we're going to teach the truth and go to our people and testify. This Bible. We home, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and this is his name whereby he shall be called. The Yahweh, our righteousness. So he's going to be called that day Yahweh, our righteousness. And the brothers that don't receive this, they're going to be damned. Let's go to Mark. 16 16 let's go to the book of mark chapter 16 verse 16 what if they don't believe what if we go to our people and they start saying i don't believe on yahweh shah man care about i you know with the levites darkening me and they say i don't believe in no damn nigga i was like this what let go to show you how corrupt our people minds are man they hate themselves they hate themselves. If the Hawashah was Issachar, I'm bowing to me. It don't matter because that's the Israelite. It's the Lord's purpose. So we got to get out this mind frame of this institutionalized racism that Esau taught us. Read Mark 16, 16, brother. Oh, this is the book of Mark, chapter 16, and verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So baptized with the word. We know it. But he that believes not shall be damned. And you're going to be damned. See? The brothers that don't believe in this, as we go, as it says in Matthew 10, 5 and 6, as we go spreading this word to the ten, uh, 10 tribes, that on all the tribes as a whole, the Most High say, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and say unto them, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Yahweh Shah is the Savior, the Shah of Kalah, the Great One, and he will return again, brothers, to save a remnant of our people. So look up for your redemption draw now. So now when we go uh, on the open forum on Wednesday, we're going to do part two of the open forum. So I'm going to say Shalom, our Allah. Peace be unto you and Kwam. That's Shah Allah. Peace be on you. Shah Allah.